Surprisingly, .NET doesn't include a deep cloning capability. Luckily, in this video, we're going to show how to create one yourself using a simple extension method that you can use on almost any object to make a deep clone of the object graph. To demonstrate cloning, we need to have some sort of structure to clone. So let's start off by creating an enumeration, and then we'll create a contact class which has a couple of properties. The first of those is the enumeration itself, the type of contact it will be, email, phone, or address, and we've given it a default value. The second property is just the value that goes with that contact type, also defaulted. As a convenience, we're going to override two strings so it's easy for us to uh, use debug output to see what's going on. Our second class, our parent of contact, is going to be a person. A person it has a name, no surprise there, and it has a list of contacts. And these are just the two properties we're going to use. We don't need to make it complicated for an example. And again, we're going to, to make it easier to debug our code, we're going to override to string so that it outputs the name of the person and a list of their contacts through this for each. That gives us our starting data. Let's create an instance of our person class. Here we go, we're going to call it original, it's our starting structure. We've given them the name John Doe, and we've created a list of child contacts, one for each of email, phone and address. So this gives us our two level hierarchy. So in our console app, we want to confirm the structure that we begin with. So we're going to call to string on person, we saw the implementation a moment ago. And now we're going to enter the code that we want to be able to implement, be able to work. So we want to be able to call clone on the original and get back a copy. In this case, it's a nullable type because in theory it could come back with null, although in practice it, it shouldn't in this example. And then we'll also call to string on that so we can double check that it has the same structure as the original. Creating the actual implementation is surprisingly simple. We have a static class to contain our extension method. As an extension method, we have to mark it as static. It's called clone, of course. And we pointed this as the first parameter because it's an extension method. And we're going to make it work against basically any type. Hence, we have a generic type T, which is what we expect to take in. And then we're going to re return back a nullable version of T. The implementation is really simple. We're going to serialize the incoming object into JSON and then deserialize it back again and return the new copy. We can prove the code works by going to the terminal. I've already compiled the code. Let's execute. Sure enough, we get what we expect. The person with their three contacts and then the cloned copy also has the same name and their three contacts. So it works as expected. Because we're using JSON serialization, you need to be aware of a couple of factors which come into play with serialization. And I can show that with some new properties. Let me add these three. Now, by default, fields are not serialized. So public int age, because it's a field, this will not be serialized. And if you don't want it serialized, that's great. It's an internal value. But if you do want it serialized, you can request that it be so by just adding the JSON include attribute. Another factor is that we have here the address attribute. You can see that it has a private setter. Anytime you don't have public for the get and set accesses, it will not serialize it. Now you can get over that by, again, using JSON include. This will cause it to serialize this, even though one or both of the accesses is marked as private or protected. Finally, you can actually deliberately exclude something that you don't want to be serialized. In this case, department, we've added JSON ignore. This will cause it to obviously ignore the property and not serialize it across, and therefore it will have whatever the default value is when the class is created as an instance. 